Hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to look at the key terms and definitions for populations and samples. So let's break down these key terms using students in a school as an example. In this context, the population refers to all the students in the school. So if we want to know something about the entire school, such as how many students prefer a certain subject, we're looking at the entire collection of students. The sampling unit, well, a sampling unit is an individual student within the school that we might collect information from. Each student represents one unit that could be selected as part of a sample. When we talk about sample, a sample is a smaller group of students selected from the entire population. So for example, if a school has 500 students and we randomly choose 50 to ask about their favorite subject, no 50 students form a sample. And a census, well a census involves collecting data from every student in the school. If we were to ask every single student about their favorite subject, that would be conducting a census. It's more thorough, but also more time consuming and resource intensive. And finally, the sampling frame. The sampling frame is essentially a list of all the students in the school from which we can collect our sample. This could be the school's attendance register or a class list. The sampling frame helps ensure we have a proper and organized way of choosing who to include in our sample. By understanding each of these terms, we can gather the data and make informed decisions based on the sample that represents the entire school population. And as we progress through this video, we're going to look at three different contexts. So in our first example, we're told that a town's local government wants to know residents' opinion on local transport services, and the council decides to conduct a sample survey to gather their views. For part A, we've been asked to write down one reason why the council should not carry out a census. Well, this is where you would observe every member of a population. And this would prove too costly and time consuming to survey every resident in the town. For part B, suggest a suitable sampling frame. And this is the list of the units from which we can draw our sample. In this context, we could use an electoral register or a list of registered voters. For part C, identify the sampling units. And these are the individual units within the population that can be sampled. So the sampling units would be each resident in the town. Okay, let's try another example. So now we're told that a company director wants to know what their employees think about a new health insurance plan. And the director decides to ask all the employees in the company. For part A, we've been asked to describe a population that the director will use. And then for part B, write down the main advantage in asking all of their employees. So perhaps you want to try this question yourself. You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll discuss each of these points. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So to describe the population the director will use, the population consists of all the employees in the company. For part B, so the main advantage in asking all of their employees is that the director will obtain complete and accurate information from the entire workforce ensuring that no one is left out. So for our final example, we're told that a company manufactures parachutes and has an order to supply 2,000. The buyer wishes to ensure that the parachutes can withstand a minimum weight before failure. For part A, suggest a reason why sensors would not be used for this purpose. For part B, the company tests four parachutes and the weights at which they fail are recorded here. We're told that the company claims that the parachutes are safe for weights up to 200 kilograms. We need to use the sample data to comment on the claim. And then for part C, suggest one way in which the company can improve their prediction. So again, do you want to try this question yourself? You can pause the video and when you come back, we'll discuss each of these points. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. 
So for part A, we can say that our census would involve testing every parachute to breaking point, leaving no parachutes left to sell. For part B, we can see here that this 170 kilogram shows that one parachute below the 200 kilograms failed. And this suggests that not all parachutes meet the safety standard, and therefore the claim is not reliable. We could also refer to 25% of the parachutes of the sample failing. Then for part C, suggest one way in which the company can improve their prediction. We could say increase the sample size, testing more parachutes would decrease the variability. But increasing the sample size would be sufficient for this question. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope that's given you an idea on the key terms and definitions for populations and samples. If you did find this helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson from my website, mrmathematics.com. I'll leave a link in the description below.